Welcome to this presentation about attitudes as predictors of behavior. Let's start with the definition of attitudes. Attitudes are enduring positive or negative evaluations of an object. So notice a few key words in there. The word enduring means that they're fairly stable. Yes, they can change, but they don't change easily and they don't change quickly. And so they're fairly stable from day to day and they involve having an emotional reaction, positively or negatively, towards something. There are three components to attitudes. The cognitive component of the attitude refers to the things that we know or believe about whatever the object is. Uh, in order to have an attitude towards something, you have to know that it exists and you have to have certain beliefs about it. So this knowledge part of the attitude is referred to as the cognitive component of the attitude. The affective component of the attitude is probably the part that most think about, most people think about first when they hear the word attitude. The affective component has to do with the emotional evaluation. You like it or you don't like it. You feel positively about it or negatively about it. That's the affective or the feeling component of the attitude. And finally, there's the behavioral component. Uh, regardless of what you know or how you feel about the object in question, uh, this has consequences for how you will actually behave uh, toward this person, place, or thing. And that part of the attitude is called the behavioral component of the attitude. Let's now consider the question of when attitudes are useful predictors of behavior. Part of the problem with predicting behavior from attitudes is that people don't always do what they say they would do. And the last two presidential elections uh, are perfect examples of that. There were polls before the elections that indicated patterns of voting that turned out to be quite different from what actually occurred on election day. And so psychologists have always been interested in trying to get around this problem when and under what circumstances will expressed attitudes actually help us know what people are going to do ahead of time. This problem goes all the way back to the 1930s. There was a classic study then by a, an individual named LaPierre who was studying anti-Chinese feelings in the United States. At that period in American history, uh, being prejudiced against the Chinese was something that seems to have been widespread and fairly well accepted. And so in this study, uh, he contacted um, 184 restaurants and 66 hotels across the United States and was trying to arrange some sort of social event, a dinner party or something like that. And all of the places that he contacted were very eager and interested in helping him. And then right at the end of the uh, phone call, the experimenter said, by the way, I guess I should tell you, um, there are going to be some Chinese people in our group and I wonder if that's going to be a problem. Every single one of the hotels and restaurants that he um, contacted indicated that they could no longer help him and that this was indeed going to be a problem. He then actually showed up with a group of people at each of these places unannounced, including some Chinese individuals, to see if they would be served or accommodated. And only one out of the 66 hotels and none of the 184 restaurants refused to wait on them. Now, these were all places that had expressed the attitude that they would not do this. And yet, when the situation arose, the expressed attitude did not match the behavior. And more recent studies confirm that people's expressed attitudes toward things like donating blood or recycling don't very reliably uh, predict how often people actually donate blood or recycle. So over time, uh, social psychologists waded through this quagmire and began to figure out the situations in which attitudes can be and might be good predictors of behavior. So what I'm about to tell you um, now is based on the results of hundreds of studies over a very long period of time. First of all, attitudes are better predictors of behavior when they're very strong or stable. Think of all of the attitudes that you hold. Some of them are things that you have held for a very long time and you're unlikely to ever change them. And they're very powerful and they're part of who you are. 
Those attitudes are going to be more useful at predicting your behavior than attitudes that have not been held for quite so long or that you may not feel quite so strongly about. So strong, stable attitudes are better predictors of behavior than weaker, more unstable attitudes. Attitudes are also better predictors uh, when the time between measuring the attitude and observing the behavior is short. So if I were to ask you your attitude about something today and then try to predict how you're going to behave in a situation a year from now, that attitude is not going to be as useful of a predictor as if I asked you for your attitude today and then see if that predicts how you behave in some situation tomorrow. So having a very short time lag between assessing the attitude and observing the behavior is helpful. The more specific the attitude is, the better it's going to be as a predictor of behavior. For example, a study uh, done quite some time ago was trying to uh, see if attitudes predicted which women would be likely to use birth control pills. And so they uh, got a measure of attitude toward birth control and found that it was not a real reliable predictor of whether women would be using birth control pills or not. However, if they asked the questions more specifically and assessed attitudes toward birth control pills, that more specific attitude actually made the attitude a better predictor than asking a more general question about birth control. So more specific attitudes are better predictors than um, less specific attitudes. Attitudes that are accessible, meaning attitudes that you're aware of or conscious of, are going to be better predictors. So, for example, if uh, I ask my class uh, what their attitudes about volunteering towards psychology, you know, psychology experiments are, um, I might find that their expressed attitudes help them uh, help me predict who's going to volunteer and who doesn't. But if I remind them before I request uh, volunteers. If I say something like, all right, I asked you a month ago uh, what your attitudes about being in psychology experiments were. Some of you expressed a very favorable attitude about that. Now, would you be willing to volunteer? Now that I have made that attitude accessible to them, they're thinking about it, uh, it is going to be more likely to influence their behavior. Individuals differ from each other in uh, what we call private self-awareness. In other words, some people introspect a lot, they think about themselves a lot, and they're more in touch with what their attitudes about things are. So for these individuals, uh, attitudes are usually better predictors of behavior simply because those attitudes are more in the person's consciousness than for individuals who are not uh, as high in private self-awareness. When the measured attitude is salient or relevant, it's a better predictor. This one's kind of obvious, but it needs to be said. So um, if I assess your attitudes toward ice cream and then try to use that attitude to predict who you're going to vote for in a presidential election, the attitude isn't going to be very good because the attitude toward ice cream is just not relevant to the choice of a presidential candidate. So the attitude needs to be related in some way to the thing you're trying to predict. And finally, um, attitudes are better predictors when other influences on behavior are minimal. Uh, another way of thinking about this is that attitudes are better at predicting patterns of behavior over time than they are for predicting single incidents of behavior. So if I'm looking at your uh, attitudes toward recycling, for example, um, and I want to see if you recycle something today in an experiment. Well, there are all kinds of reasons why you may or may not be likely to recycle in that one specific situation. But your attitude should, over time, uh, show more of a tendency to recycle than not. So if I'm trying to predict long-term patterns of behavior uh, rather than single instances of behavior, the uh, attitude will be more effective.